This is the Home Assistant Yellow, a home automation platform that emphasizes privacy and local control of your smart home devices. Here are the specs. It comes with the Zigbee module on board, along with a couple USB ports. Mine did not come with a Compute Module 4. Some do, some don't, so make sure you check before you buy one. Putting it off to the side here for a moment, let's take a look at the rest of the box. Looking at the bottom of the box, it comes with a Raspberry Pi heat sink along with thermal pads and screws. It also comes with an ethernet cable. This one I believe was about two meters long, give or take. There are also a couple of Home Assistant stickers at the bottom if you like those. Mine didn't come with a power supply, but I got it off eBay, so that's probably why. Any 12 volt, two amp power supply will do just fine. To get access to the SSD screws, we need to take the four screws off of the back of the unit. These are hand tightened, so it should be easy. We can then gently take off the lid of the yellow and we'll see the entire board. I put a, a zoomed in picture of the board here. We'll be using the compute module for and SSD slots. It also has GPIO pins uh, for future projects. So we need to take the back plate off uh, to start installing the SSD. I have the Samsung, this one works fine. I'll leave a link in the description to drives that work. I had to buy my own compute module. Like I mentioned, this one has eight gigs of RAM, but no onboard storage that the SSD is for. In order to install the Home Assistant software, we need to hook it up to our computer. So I got this SSD adapter. It hooks into my computer with a simple USB cable. So let's get that plugged in so we can install the software. In order to install the Home Assistant software, we need to download an app called the Raspberry Pi Imager. This is an app put out by the Raspberry Pi company that allows us to install different operating systems on Raspberry Pis, but also on SSDs like ours. So let's go ahead and download the installer. I download mine for Windows, because that's what I'm using. Go ahead and open up the executable, and it's a simple installation. You can click install and there's no options and you pretty much run it after it's done. Drag it over to one of your windows. I made it a little bigger to be easier to see. You can click the choose OS button and we wanna to go to the other specific purpose OS menu. In there, we'll go to the home assistant and home automation menu. Once you're in there, the last one I promise, you'll click the Home Assistant menu right there, and then at the bottom, it will be Home Assistant OS or the Home Assistant Yellow. So click that, you can then click and choose the storage. Your SSD should show up here if it's plugged in properly, so click on that one. Click Next when, uh, when you're ready. It'll be erased, but that's fine because the drive is brand new, so click Yes. It'll sit there and put Home Assistant on your SSD, and when it's done, you can put the drive in. Now we need to undo the screw on the back of the Home Assistant yellow along with the little um, mounting uh, brace there. Put the drive in to the slot just like that. Uh, I put the fastener on the little half circle on the drive and turn it over and hold it with my finger while I put the screw in on the bottom this way. Uh, you know that way it won't like pop up or or anything like that, and you'll be able to screw it in easily. Should be hand tightened once it's done. Uh, it should be pretty flat, flat. Now we need to install the Raspberry Pi compute module. These are kind of tricky. There's the two little ports on the back of the compute module, and those need to go into the two slots on the board, as you see there. I found it easier to line up one port in the slot and then have the second one fall into place on the opposite side that made it easier for me. Push it into the slots on the board. It should be firm and snug. Now we can install the heat sink. It comes with two spring screws and a couple of thermal pads. You can put those onto the Compute Module 4's chips, just like that. Uh, one's a square and one's a rectangle, so they fit into their corresponding chip sizes you can see there. Make sure that the plastic is off of both sides of the thermal pads. I'm pushing it on there because I took the plastic off in a little bit. Make sure you put the screws in. Uh, one at a time, it should look something like this when you're done. Uh, if it's installed correctly, the 
compute module will be plugged in and be flat against the yellow's circuit board. So now all we need to do is take the heat sink and we're gonna put the two spring screws, you can see there, we put those into the corner slots of the heat sink and uh, the kind of a springy action. This will make it easier to install uh, later. So we're gonna put both in first. And on the spring screws, you can see there's little clips on the bottom that secures it into the Home Assistant yellow. So push those in there and then we're going to, well, you can see the little clips there. That'll go in the bottom to secure it to the yellow, like I mentioned. So put the heat sink over the thermal pads that you put onto the Raspberry Pi and get the two screws lined up with the two holes on the yellow there that are next to the Pi. Once those are good, you can put one corner in. It should be a little click. And then you can push in the middle and click and the other spring screw on the other side. Should be a click and they'll both be in. You can gently move it and nothing should come off or, or come undone. And that's how you can verify that in there. You can see the two little clips on the bottom of the board are poking through and that's how you know that it's installed. So we're gonna put the back plate back on. There's four little plastic nubs on the back plate that go through uh, some small holes in the corners of the Home Assistant Yellow. Put that on and then um, once that's on, we can put the top lid back on. I usually start with the side that has the USB ports on it first. That makes it easy for them to slide into their respective gaps. And then now we can just put the four hand screws on like we did earlier when we were undoing it all. And then now we're ready to get it powered on. If you had an ethernet cable, plug it into your router or your firewall or whatever you have. And then uh, if it's power over ethernet, it should just power on. Mine is not. Uh, like I mentioned, I need the power supply. So let's go ahead and get that plugged in as well. When you plug it in, you should see three LEDs, a red, a green, and a yellow blinking. If you see that, that's how you know that it's powered on. If you know how to find an IP address on your network, you can skip this section. But for those who don't, we need to find the address of our Home Assistant Yellow. So I use a tool called Network Manager on GitHub. Go to the releases page and download the latest release for your system. Wherever the version number happens to be, it's probably a higher version when you're watching this. Extract it and then run the executable. This will bring up the application and it'll scan our network to find what IP address our Home Assistant Yellow has. Go to the port scanner and enter your host IP range. If you don't know what this is, you can go back to the main tab and mine's 10.10.10.1. Yours might be 192.168, but you can put 10.10.10.1 and then the last address will be 10.10.10.254. Put the port as 8.123, that's Home Assistant's port, and then click scan. It'll scan your network for any IP address that has that port open. So 10.10.10.1, as you can see right there, is the address that it found. So if we go over to our browser and put that in there, it will launch the Home Assistant landing page. Pretty cool, that means it worked. All right, so on this landing page, they have links changing the language or whatever. You can click Create My Smart Home to get started. You can type in your name and your password. Uh, you can also choose uh, your location for wherever you're at. They turn all the analytics off by default, which I think is great. On this next page, it auto discovers some devices. You can go ahead and skip that for now. We just want to get to the dashboard. And this is the Home Assistant dashboard. We're going to go to the settings real quick and check to make sure that all the storage is being used. You can go over to system and you can see storage has 873 gigs free. So that means it's recognized all of our SSD space. Go back to the hardware section and you can see the Home Assistant yellow. Most people only need to configure the hardware settings maybe if they don't like the LEDs. If it's in your room or you know, you're sleeping at night and it bothers you, you can untoggle um, those off. But I leave them on for debugging purposes, uh, just, just in case. You can also check the all hardware options. This will show you the TTY devices for like the Zigbee module, for example, or the GPIO chips. Most people never need to look at those, but uh, they're there if you need it. And you can see at the bottom that the gigs of RAM is being recognized. And that's it.
we unboxed it, we got it all set up, and now we're ready to start automating. I can't wait to start making automations with this. Get subscribed. And thanks for watching.